Hi everybody, Marcus Beck here with the Von Tip video. This week, we're going to talk about handling large sets of data with Von Grid. Now, the easiest way to use Von and Grid is to bind the items property of the grid to an array of uh, data that you have. This works really great when you have small sets of data, but it doesn't really scale when you start having thousands, tens of thousands, even millions of rows of data. So in this week's video, I want to show you how to use the data provider API to handle essentially any size data set uh, efficiently by only fetching what you need as the user scrolls down. So let's jump into code and see how we can do this. All right, so let me start by showing you the application that I have. So you can see I have a fairly large list of people here, a thousand to be exact. And if I refresh this with the network tab open here, you can see that right now I'm fetching about 192K worth of JSON to display all these people. So if I had 10,000 people instead of 1,000 people, I'd be up to almost two megs of data. And <laughs> you can imagine going for from 10,000 to 100,000 to a million. It does just doesn't really kind of work. So instead of loading every single person out of our database into this grid all at once, let's take a look at using data provider to only fetch what we need at any given time as we're scrolling down. So essentially, how do we page the data? All right, so let's take a look at what we have in the actual code here. So I have a state in my lit element view that is a person array. It's bound to the voting grids items property, and it gets populated here on the connected callback with a call to the person endpoint to list all. Now list all will just call my uh, Spring Boot uh, or sorry Spring Data repository and call find all to essentially return the entire database. So let's take a look at how we can handle this using the data provider API in Vodin Grid to only fetch what we need at any given time. So I'll start by removing this uh, property and likewise the, the fetch here. And I will obviously need to remove this items binding here. So instead of binding to items, we're gonna bind a data provider and I'm gonna bind this to this dot data provider. Data provider will be a function, will be an uh, async function called data provider. provider. And this will take in two things. So first of all, will be some parameters. And this will be of type grid data provider parameters. And the other one will be a callback that we call uh, when we actually uh, fetch the data from from the server. So the callback will be of type grid data provider callback. So if we look at what we have here, the parameters includes page size, page number, optionally some filters and sort orders, which we won't go through in this video, and a parent item in case you're working with a tree grid. The callback takes in two things essentially the items for that page that we're fetching and optionally a size, which is the size of the entire data set. All right, so essentially what I wanna do then is change my backend. So instead of returning all the uh, people in my database, it will only return a page worth of people at a given time that matches the parameters here. So let's go back into our backend code here in the person endpoint and remove this method that returns every single person. Now, instead, what I'll do is I'll create the little helper data type for a page response that we can return uh, with the page content and then that information about how many people do we have in our database. So I'll create a little inner class here, class page response, and we'll type this. And what this will include will be a uh, public list of that type, and we can call this content, and that'll be the page content and public uh, long, which will be size. So that's the size of the entire database. All right, so now that we have this response type, I'll create a new uh, endpoint method here. So this will be a public page response of type person, and we can call this get page, for instance, um, it'll take in two things. So the in integer of the page and an integer saying what the page size is. 
like that. All right, let's see here. And it must return something. So we'll get back to that in just a second. Um, so what we can do is we can use this Spring Boot repository that we have. We can use the same find all method. But what we're going to do is instead of just finding all, we're going to pass in a page uh, request of, and then use this one that takes in a page and a size. All right, and let's extract this into a variable. We can call this db page. So that's the page from the database. And what I want to do then is construct a response, a new page response. So we'll call this uh, response and initialize a new page response of type person. So we need to pass in the person here as the type. And then we can set the appropriate data here. So the response content should be the database page content. And the response size will be the database page total number of elements like this. And then we'll uh, return this uh, response here. Now, you might wonder why I didn't just respond with the entire database page here. And the reason is that there's quite a lot of stuff exposed through that page that I don't want to send over to the client. Both it's not kind of efficient in terms of transfer size, but also I don't want to expose anything extra from my backend to the server or to the client unless I have to. All right, so now we have a method get page here that we can call with the page and the page size and that will return a page response uh, that corresponds to that. Okay, so then let's go back into our data provider implementation here and actually implement it. What we need to do here then is call that new endpoint method and call the callback with the info from there. So we'll have a constant page that we get by awaiting the person endpoint dot get page, and then we need to take the parameters, get the page, and the parameters page size, pass those in. So once we have the page, we can uh, call the callback, and we can pass in the content from the page, and then we can pass in the size, the total size that we get back from, from the back end like this. All right, we save that. Um, Let's go ahead and delete that import that we don't need. So go ahead and save that again. And let's see what happens here. So I'll uh, actually clear my network inspector here. And let's refresh this. So we can see we're now calling get page. We're only getting 9.7k worth of JSON. And what should happen now is that if we start scrolling down, you can start seeing all these calls to get page, all fetching less than 10k of data at a time. So this way, we're not downloading the entire database in one go, just to display a very large data set. This will mean that our application will load faster, it will be more memory efficient, and overall just perform better. So there you have it, an easy way to handle large data sets with Von Grid using the data provider API. If you have any questions about this video, be sure to ask them in the comments below. If you have ideas for new videos, let me know as well. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.